This is Lesson 1.8, Logical Reasoning and Counterexamples. Your objectives are to identify the hypothesis and conclusion in a conditional statement and to use a counterexample to show that an assertion is false. A conditional statement is in the form if A then B. These are if then statements. The part after the word if is the hypothesis and the part after the word then is the conclusion. Example 1. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion. If it is Wednesday, then Jerry has aerobics class. The hypothesis comes after if, so the hypothesis, it is Wednesday. The conclusion is after the word then, so the conclusion is, Jerry has aerobics class. Notice, if is not in the hypothesis, then is not in the conclusion. B. If 2x minus 4 is less than 10, then x is less than 7. The hypothesis, 2x minus 4 is less than 10. The conclusion, x is less than 7. Example 2, identify the hypothesis and the conclusion of each statement, then write them in if-then form. You have to decide what's the cause and what's the effect. The cause is the hypothesis and the effect is the conclusion. A. You and Marilyn can watch a movie on Thursday, which means if it's Thursday, that's when the movie happens. So the hypothesis, it is Thursday. The conclusion, you and Marilyn can watch a movie. So the if-then statement, if it is Thursday, then you and Marilyn can watch a movie. B. For a number A such that 3A plus 2 equals 11, A equals 3. So the hypothesis, 3a plus 2 equals 11. The conclusion, a equals 3. The if-then statement, if 3a plus 2 equals 11, then a equals 3. For these, think of what has to happen first. That would be the hypothesis. And what happens as a result, that's the conclusion. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion of each statement. Number one, if it is April, then it might rain. The hypothesis, it is April. The conclusion, it might rain. Hypothesis is after if, conclusion is after then. Number two, if you are a sprinter, then you can run fast. The hypothesis, you are a sprinter. The conclusion, you can run fast. Number three, if 12 minus 4x equals 4, then x equals 2. The hypothesis, 12 minus 4x equals 4. The conclusion, x equals 2. Number four, if it is Monday, then you are in school. The hypothesis, it is Monday. The conclusion, you are in school. Remember, if is not a part of the hypothesis then is not a part of the conclusion. Number five, if the area of a square is 49, then the square has a side length 7. The hypothesis, the area of a square is 49. The conclusion, the square has side length 7. Identify the hypothesis and conclusion of each statement, then write the statement in if-then form. Number six, a quadrilateral with equal sides is a rhombus. The hypothesis is that the quadrilateral has equal sides. The conclusion has to be that it's a rhombus. So if-then form, if a quadrilateral has equal sides, then it is a rhombus. For if then, just take if hypothesis, then conclusion. Number seven, a number that is divisible by eight is also divisible by four. So the hypothesis must be a number is divisible by eight. So the conclusion is, it is divisible by 4. If then would be, if a number is divisible by 8, then it is divisible by 4. If hypothesis, 
then conclusion. Number eight, Carlin goes to the movies when she does not have homework. Be careful here. Does she go to the movies because she does not have homework? Or does she not have homework because she goes to the movies? Whatever makes sense after because, that's the conclusion. She goes to the movies because she does not have homework. So the hypothesis is she does not have homework. And the conclusion must be she goes to the movies. If Carlin does not have homework, then she goes to the movies. This is one that you need to be careful with because it looks like it's written backwards. Just think of what first has to happen and then what happens because the first thing happened. Deductive reasoning and counterexamples. Deductive reasoning is the process of using facts, rules, definitions, or properties to reach a valid conclusion. To show that a conditional statement is false, use a counterexample, which is one example for which the conditional statement is false. You need to find only one counterexample for the statement to be false. Determine a valid conclusion from the statement. If two numbers are even, then their sum is even for the given conditions. If a valid conclusion does not follow, write no valid conclusion and explain why. A. The two numbers are 4 and 8. Well, 4 and 8 are even, which means their sum has to be even. And 4 plus 8 is 12, which is even. It works. The conclusion, the sum of 4 and 8 is even. B. The sum of two numbers is 20. But that doesn't flow because the original statement says, if two numbers are even, I should be given two even numbers here, but instead I'm told that the sum is 20. That's just not going to work. Also notice, if the sum is 20, I could have two even numbers, two odd numbers. There's no way to know. So because of this situation, it's out of order, so there's no valid conclusion. Example 2. Provide a counterexample to this conditional statement. If you use a calculator for a math problem, then you will get the answer correct. But look at their counterexample. If the problem is 475 divided by 5 and you accidentally press a minus sign, you won't get the correct answer. A counterexample is any one way that the statement won't work. You only need one counterexample, and that proves the statement false. Determine a valid conclusion that follows from the statement. If the last digit of a number is 0 or 5, then the number is divisible by 5 for the given conditions. If a valid conclusion does not follow, write no valid conclusion and explain why. Number 1. The number is 120. Well, 120 ends in 0, which means that 120 is divisible by 5. Number two, the number is a multiple of four. Well, that doesn't say anything about the number ending in zero or five. If you look at different multiples of four, you see that some of them do not end in a zero or five. Twenty ends in a zero, but not all of them. Because it doesn't always happen, there's no valid conclusion. Number three, the number is 101. Well, 101 doesn't end in a zero or five, so I can't say what the conclusion might be. So there is no valid conclusion. The statement doesn't say anything about a number ending in a one. It only says what happens when it ends in a zero or a five. Find a counterexample for each conditional statement. Number four, if Susan is in school, then she is in math class. Well, if she's in school, does she always have to be in math class? No. Susan 
might be in science class. That is a counterexample. It's true for the hypothesis, but it's false for the conclusion. That's what a counterexample does. Number five, if a number is a square, then it's divisible by two. Well, that's true sometimes. For example, four squared is 16, and 16 is divisible by two. But what about nine? Three squared equals nine. Is nine divisible by two? No, it's not. That's your counterexample. It is a square, but it's not divisible by two. Number six, if a quadrilateral has four right angles, then the quadrilateral is a square. Is there any quadrilateral with four right angles that's not a square? Sure, a rectangle. And that's your counterexample. Number seven, if you were born in New York, then you live in New York. Well, what if you were born in New York and then you move? If you move to Virginia, you no longer live in New York. So you can be born in New York and then live in another state. That's a counterexample. Number eight, if three times a number is greater than 15, then the number must be greater than six. So I need a different number where three times that number is greater than 15, but the number is not greater than six. How about six? Three times six is greater than 15. Is six greater than six? No. So that's your counterexample. It's true for the hypothesis, but it's false for the conclusion. Number nine. If three x minus two is less than or equal to 10, then x is less than four. Notice, the hypothesis had less than or equal to, but the conclusion only had less than. So I think another possibility would be if x was equal to four. Let's check it. Three times four minus two is less than or equal to 10? Yes, 10 is less than or equal to 10. Now check the conclusion. Is 4 less than 4? No. So x equals 4. It's true for the hypothesis, but it's false for the conclusion. So remember, for a counterexample, it has to be true for the hypothesis, but false for the conclusion. You only need one counterexample to prove a conditional statement to be false. When you're looking for a valid conclusion, it has to be true for the hypothesis, and if it is, then you can make that conclusion that was given in the original statement. And remember, if you're looking for the hypothesis and conclusion, the hypothesis comes after the word if, and the conclusion comes after the word then. If the hypothesis, then the conclusion must happen.